it's, yeah. it's unrelenting. That those those morals, I think, um, going back to the conversation we had off camera earlier, um, obviously a big issue at the moment that we're facing. I think every culture is facing yeah. in England or in London, however specific you want to be, um, is the youth culture, the crime that's going on out there, and it's very relevant to what you do work-wise. What would you say is the main problem? What's the core of the problem, in your opinion, as someone who's very much close with youths? Mm, it's hard, man. Mm. People don't ask me this. The main problem with uh, the young people today in terms of the issues that we have is a few things, man. Like, it comes down to a lack of empathy. Um, it comes down to also... It's like a lack of... I know this sounds weird, but like a lack of structure in terms of how things are in communities. It's like we used to have a certain structure that I think was based upon the morals that were set by our parents. Mm. So for instance, respect for your elders. Mm. That seems to have disappeared where now you have a young person who feels like if they want to get down or hurt someone who's older than them to get either respect or to get payback or revenge, they'll do so. That's crazy. Mm. Also, we have a lack of um, facilities and a lack of funding into areas that will allow young people to have places to go and also be supported. Mm. Because a lot of young people now are going through traumatic experiences that are based upon um, murders, crimes, mm. uh, uh, deaths at way too young an age. And they're becoming desensitized to that level of violence mm. and that level of criminality. But nothing's being done where they have a support after that will help them have some sort of a counseling, some sort of a being spoken to. You can't just let a, a young person who's 13 or 14 see three or four or five people around them being killed and they're just left to it. Do you know what? That's, that's the crazy point. I mean, I've never actually thought of it like that. Like these kids are seeing this stuff is normal, so it becomes normal to them. Exactly. And then also, you know, I'm not saying that we can't report on what's happening, mm. but I'm going to break it down to you like this. If you keep seeing adverts and news or and images about Pad Thai, yeah? Pad Thai, Pad Thai, Pad Thai. Mm. When you feel hungry, the mm. first thing that you're going to want to go and get or go and cook is what? Pad Thai, because at the front of your psyche. So we have all of this knifing, knifing, knifing and, and these types of things that are happening that are constantly images that we are being given, shown via news, via media. When a young person is in a situation of conflict, the thing that's at the front of their psyche is stabbing, 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 stabbing. Mm. Let me get my knife and boom. Because it's being fed to them and, and unconsciously it's now at the front of their psyche it's the same thing it's psychology bro so it's where like, are you saying it's being fed to them by is that via the media or by their peers ev everywhere bro mm. where can they avoid it it's in lyrics in songs mm. it's in programs it's in films it's in the news mm. it's in discussions in school i'm hearing about it their friends are going through mm. it it's at the front of their psyche because it's being fed to them continually. Now, I'm not trying to blame anybody, but yeah. I'm just trying to give you a metaphorical example of what's happening. And that's exactly what's happening, and that is exactly why it's happening. It's not the only reason why it's happening, but it's a very big part to do with it. There's so many reasons why young people are, 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 are going through these struggles at the moment. So many reasons. You, and you, you, sorry to cut you, you yeah. mentioned um, having solutions almost that come with a level of care afterwards. And I find something that always comes up in this debate for years going back to even when i was young listening to um, like jeff schumann and choice fm like talking jeff. about this mm. um is is the is the suggestion of more schemes more youth clubs more of this kind of stuff but how effective do you think those things are in the grand scheme of things you're from a similar background i'm from a similar background we've both come up in youth clubs yeah. i'm sure we know cages and yeah. do you know what i mean All of that. Yeah. how beneficial are these alternatives for these kids I know, it's a, it's a good point that you're making. Like, 
And that's just food for thought. And I'm not saying they are or they're not. But what, how, I, I, how? I'm not going to... I'll say that they are beneficial, but I'm not going to say they're all-encompassing. I'm not going to say by, by us having these facilities all given back and having schemes and having things to do for young people that all, all of a sudden we're going to have an, eras- an, an erasure of all the, of all the issues. Yeah. But it's by no mistake that if you have more things to do, you're going to find yourself in less badness. Yeah. You might find yourself in badness in, in doing the things that you do anyway because mm. we, we, we all knew about fights and stuff happening at youth clubs. You know what I mean? But if they've got nothing to do, bro, what are they going to end up doing, fam? Like, what is the most attractive thing? Badness. Whether they're doing badness to each other, it's going to be badness. Mm. Like, I feel like we're leaving the youths them. We're leaving them out to dry and then acting all shocked when we're seeing the madness that's happening. Mm. If we're not doing anything with or for them, why are we so shocked then that they're finding themselves in these conflictive situations? But my problem is, is that I feel like a lot of the conflictive situations, which will happen anyway, mm. but a lot of them happening right now, are as a result of them wanting them to happen. I feel like young people nowadays want to have enemies and ops. Mm. They want to have enemies and ops because it's almost cool for you to have mm. an opposition now. But the problem with having an opposition is that things have to go down. When you see your opposition, you can't just say hi and bye. Mm. You've got to go and damage your opposition. And that's leading to a, a, a loss, a unnecessary loss of so much life. So it's like, what are we going to do to step in? And I can't lie, I was saying to someone the other day, I feel like I'm in the first time in my life when I feel like I actually don't know the answers or yeah. I don't know what I can yeah. do. Yeah, same here. Yeah, exactly the same here. Don't because that's why, and that's why I say what I said in regards to these other solutions. Like, yeah, they, like, we thought of so many different things we can do with these, with these sort of challenges and we're going to do our part regardless because I think you have to. But then at the same time, you have the lane of, shall we put on events and use people that they're relatable to but then or shall we do shall we do seminars or shall we do youth schemes or and all these things are fine but then i find that youths come to them but not the youths that are causing the problems because they're too cool to go to these things a lot of the time in my opinion yep. they're too why am i going to that where everyone else is now nah, we're on the block mm-hmm. I'm like, why am i going to this and to my man and i've worked with man? them i've worked with those kids i worked on programs in this country where I've had those kids and it's like, I've had to do my best to try and keep them on the program and, and, and make them engage into it. The, thing, the funniest thing is when they actually do though, they love it, but they have to let go of themselves. I remember even yeah, me, yeah. I had to let go of myself. Like I remember the first day that I, I remember it vividly. I, I, I did a play and I met this boy who was a child actor and he told me to come to his agency because he said that he thought I was a good actor. Man was too, road minded yeah. but one day I went to this um, to this class they did classes as well at yeah. the agency and I remember she said okay I'm going to play oh, she, was, she was Canadian I'm going to yeah. play some music and then when I call your name you're going to go <laughs> in the centre and you're going to dance yeah. yeah and I was like yo she better not so I'm just looking down from there she better not call man's name car man ain't going in no centre <laughs> I'm doing no dancing she saw that straight away she was like Aaron called my name bro yeah. and this was the day that I lost myself I remember I went to the center and I was like oh but I've got to do something and I just started moving and then I just started moving more and then I just started I, I lost I, it's like an out-of-body experience yeah. I just let my body go yeah. moving that's to the point where when I opened back up my eyes again to look around me everyone else was doing the same thing because they had been called in but I didn't even hear that mm. because I had lost myself and that was the first time that I realized Aaron you don't have to be hard all the time you can step out and actually be yourself. Mm. And that started a journey for me of trying to be myself because I spent a lot of time, I didn't need, a lot of people used to know me as a screw face you. Mm. Never see me smile. And to be honest, if you look at my face now, my face sets in a certain mm. way, even, even mm. now it still sets in a way that's not really um, the most maybe approachable. Yeah. But if you know me, you know that I am approachable. And so I had to, I had to do you know what, it's like a re-education. I had yes. to, I had to yes. re-educate myself out of previous unneeded mannerisms. Mm. And that's something that the youths need to do. Mm. A lot of them are playing hard and doing things and going along with the status quo of, what, of where they are and who they're with, but it's not really them. Mm. Don't get it twisted. Some of these youths, unfortunately, are very cold. I've met youths that are cold, bro. Like, I don't know what's happened, but they've developed an emotionlessness, mm. yeah? But there's a lot of them that are not like that at all. And these are the ones that are going now and stabbing someone, taking their life, and in the sense, giving their whole life as well, and never really, not really wanting to or meaning to, mm. but it's too late. Because you're not going to be in a cell for at least 20 something years. And you're going to be reflecting the whole time, but I shouldn't have done that. Mm. But we need to try and intercept before that. Let's intercept before they do something like that. 
So if you're right now 2018, you're 17, 18 years old, and as far as you know, you could go to the corner shop and someone from the other block <laughs> could catch you slipping yeah. and a situation could arise and you could lose your life. Mm -hmm. Just go into the shop. Mm. You're not necessarily the front runner. Mm. You're just, you live on that block where mm. that block is, that it's an active block. Yeah. What do you do? It's mad. Like what, what, what alternative do you have? Bear in mind, let's say you don't carry knives, you don't carry anything like that, but your options are, or would you agree that your options are now limited because you could go to the shop, literally to the corner shop and lose your life? Yeah, and that's the problem because before, you know, we had civilians. Mm. We had bystanders, man that you knew that, no, they're mm. not really on it. But now these youths are just trying to get down anybody from the other side. All you got to do is be associated with an area. They know you're from that area. Like one of the, one of the stories in my new series of When Kids Kill, that I'm the boy, a boy that got run down and killed in Thornton Heath. Mm. He wasn't to do with anything, bro. He wasn't involved in nothing. But he's from the area. The boys saw him, know he's from the area, ran him down and stabbed him and killed him. He was 15 years old. They were like 21. What the hell are they doing? But it's because, like you're saying, you can just literally find yourself in that situation. Now, the thing is, I have spoken to some of these young people that say, oh, like, if you don't want to be in this life, you don't have to be in it. You can just go and do, do books in it, do book. Mm. That's what they call you, you know how they talk, yeah, do yeah, book. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and man will leave you. And, it's, and that's true, they'll probably leave you in their area. But the thing is, because they're living in your area now, and because you've got this problem with other people, they might still be, be vulnerable. Mm. It's a hard situation. Also now, nowadays, you can't run. Like, man has, everyone's, I've run for my life before. Mm. You run for your life now, you, you, you've taken the L. Oh, and the man is run, he's not really on nothing. Or, yeah. And then it's like, so what do you do? And bro, I don't know. Mm. I really don't it's know. It's frustrating, isn't it? And it's frustrating for me because innocents are killing and innocents are losing their life. Now, I know some people might not agree with that statement, but I, I know what I'm talking about. Yeah. These, some of these kids yeah, are not... Yeah, I agree. Because yeah. you, a lot of people that have never touched in, in this life look at a newspaper article and they just buy it straight away. And, mm -hmm. when, and, I, and I, know, I know what you mean when you say innocent. Mm -hmm. They may be active mm -hmm. to other people, but yeah. we know... I've looked at youths before and know you're, you're the guy here, but you're, mm. I know you're not the guy. And you're not really on it as well. You're not really you're on doing it. You don't what you think you have it. to. Yeah. You don't want to be on it. And it reminds me of like Bloods and Crips when I used to like read and learn about Bloods and Crips stories where you had to just, you had to, what's the word? You had to loke or you had yeah. to, um, what's the word? You had to be down. Well, that's basically how London's become. It's becoming like that. But yeah. we never really had that. You don't have to be down. Mm. There's men that we had in areas that we knew that weren't on it and they were allowed to, you know, not, I say allowed, it sounds bad to even say that, but they were allowed to live their yeah. life as they wanted to and not be involved in this. But it's like, you can't even do that now. It's mad, bro. How much of a part do you think the internet plays in this? The internet plays a massive part, bro, nowadays. Um, there's a new term that's actually come out from the Chicago School of um, Study in, so in Sociology which is called cyberbanging. Like, you might have heard it before anyway, but it's actually an officially recognised word now within sociology, cyberbanging, which has to do with uh, the taunting of enemies or opposition via the use of the internet and social media apps. It's become an official thing now because uh, Chicago noticed it first, because I, I don't know if you know about Chicago's yeah. violence, like, yeah. they've got a lot of violence. Well, the thing is, a lot of people missed, that someone said to me the other day, yeah, but drill music started in London, right? Nah, it started bro. in Chicago. Yeah. And all these, and a lot of these kids were, they were influenced by that Chief Keef and that yeah, and all of that. Yeah, and definitely. then what's happened is now that generation that's after that, now they're doing that music. Mm. They're doing it because, they, and if you listen to the beats, it's a, it's, a straight, it's a straight emulation of what was over there. Exactly. But they went through that phase, but then now we're going, it's crazy. Um, but it's not a new turn, because we know what it is. Yeah. And it definitely is um, affecting, because what it is now is that, you know, I hate to keep on going back to like personal reflection, but we have to in it. Mm. Before we would have like people that we had problems with. You might not ever see Donnie until you see Donnie in mm. real life. Mm. But now the internet has made everybody so reachable. You can directly message man on a, on a, on, on a, on a social media platform. You can maybe even video him some way. Mm. You can put something online that's taunting him. You can film the, the, um, the attack that you do on somebody. So many elements now have been added by the internet that has made it almost impossible to avoid the conflict. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, I remember back in the day, like, you might have someone that you don't... And the thing is, you might not even... You might know his name. Oh, so-and-so is talking something about you, but you don't even know what he looks like. But the internet has made it that everyone is visible now mm. and everyone is contactable. I remember as well a couple of years ago, not even recently, a couple of years ago, when um, I was hearing that these youths were organising via social media that they're going to link up in Carnival to war each other. Mm. 
they, they made arrangements to war each other via social media and met in carnival to get it on. Mm. Bro, what the hell? Mm. Like, you could be organizing so many other great things that could empower and, and progress you. But instead, like, the internet is being used in, in the most negative way. And I don't mean to say, you know, I, I, it sounds all nice and airy fairy, but you know what I'm trying to say? Yeah, yeah, definitely. It's like the internet has so much power that can be used, but mm. it's being used, unfortunately, in the worst of ways. Mm. And in this new series that I'm filming of When Kids Kill, I hate to keep on referring back to it, but it's such a big issue that I've seen in this series. Yeah. Just in, in just how much the internet is being used. The internet is documenting everything. It's documenting the beef. It's documenting, no, it's, it's, it's documenting the indirects first. Yeah. Indirect um, statements made each other to try and taunt each other. To, to when you get to the actual stage where they're actually having direct taunts, to the stage where you're seeing videos, to the stage where you're seeing videos of the actual attacks, yeah. to the stage where you're even seeing videos of a person losing their life, yeah. which I've seen in the case with Shoki. Yeah. Yeah? So you're actually seeing the whole played out um, a, a procedure of occurrences of kids' beef and and ending in kids losing their life mm. all through the internet and no one's regulating it properly videos are still available for you to see online videos are still available whereas there's songs that are, are talking directly about certain types of murders or wanting to murder people videos are still existing of certain attacks videos are still existing of people losing their life in video nothing's being taken down and it's not being regulated properly I don't mean to point fingers at the, um, the YouTubes and the, and the platforms but it's clear as day, bro. Something needs to be done to regulate that. Mm. It's inflammatory. It is. With you and your career, obviously, this is something I've had to touch on, but we will obviously t take a bit of a step away from the negative side, Please. but you also yeah. got to appreciate for you. I, I, I think even coming here today, I'm very intrigued in your insight on this. I'm very intrigued in your opinion on this because I feel like it's valid. I feel like you're at the core of it. You're, at the, you, you're in touch with these youths every day, so it's important. Mm. But I'm more of a...